Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Anthony Reale, as it was stated. Uh, I am the creative director of uh, Avella Group. I'm a professor at CCS, and I created a turbine, a hydrokinetic turbine called Straight Power. And apparently my slides are going to be huge today, so if you don't see the whole image, I'll try to do my best around it. All right, so what is Straight Power? Uh, in 2010, I was asked to do by the College of Creative Studies to show and demonstrate uh, what I had learned in a senior project. And I had designed a hydrokinetic turbine. And this hydrokinetic turbine was based off of the basking shark. And what is the basking shark? Okay, the basking shark is this enormous uh, filter feeding shark. And this filter feeding shark swims with its mouth open. And as someone who observes things, and I observe things very intently, this thing moves forward with its mouth just kind of feeding, and it's counterintuitive to how you think something would want to swim through fluid. And when I noticed this, I said, there's something unique about this. I need to capitalize on this. So I took the shark's head, and I basically lopped it off its body, and I said, this would be a great turbine, a great underwater windmill. And as part of my goal, I said, I need to redefine this motor of the Motor City. So I looked to the name, Detroit. Detroit in French means straight, so there's straight power, Detroit power. The Detroit River produces 370 million foot-pounds of torque per second. And if I told you the guys in the Motor City had an engine that had 370 million foot-pounds of torque, you said those guys are crazy, right? So I took just some simple mathematics and I decided to start designing, which would be, uh, the slides aren't moving forward anymore. Thank you. OK, uh, which was part of this whole entire process. And if you can see the entire slide, there's all these beautiful images also over here that explains <laughs> what it looked like. So I took uh, 4,800 board feet of poplar. Oh, there we go. Thank you. And I sliced it into all these little bits and pieces. And I made these rings, these donuts. And I'd call my friends up. I'd be like, hey, it's beautiful. It's summertime. What are you doing? Would you like to glue and butter walls together with me? And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, uh, I have this wood, and I need to make these rings. So I took these things, and I made these rings. And then I started shaping them with chainsaws. And I brought them over to the College for Creative Studies. And uh, we milled them on this milling machine. I then hooked up with the. Uh, University of Michigan's Hydrodynamic Laboratory, and they helped me design this kind of fixture. So I put this 900-pound model together with wood and glue and dowels, you know, like a good creative person does. And I went and brought it there and actually started testing. And what was nice was that we put over hundreds of thousands of data points in our collection. And I, went, I took this turbine, and we placed it under the water, and every day we would go, and we'd see it start working, and we broke hydraulic pumps, and we, you know, the, the, the material started cracking, and it started crazing. It's all part of this amazing process. And what was really fun was on my birthday, it all stopped working. <laughs> and I'm like, why is it stopped? And I think this was the point where we all realized, well, the blades are spinning, but we're not getting any energy. What's, what's going on? We had a pressure spike of about 2,800 PSI when we were running on that, that machine. So on my birthday, I jumped into the water. Now, I don't know if you know much about water and temperatures. I learned this really quickly. 60 degrees is very, very cold water. And I had to disassemble the transmission of this one breath at a time uh, underwater. It was about 10 feet underwater. So it was just like one breath, one bolt, you know, a little wrench, bring it down, come up. It's cold. Please let me get out of here. That was basically all I did that day. So it was a good birthday. Uh, after all of these numbers, like, so what did this do? What really did this do? And we showed that straight power improved the efficiency of the actual transmission inside by about 40%. So whatever powertrain you decide to put in this, it improved the efficiency. So after watching this thing cycle down this large track over and over again, I was noticing there was little flecks of paint in the water. And as I was watching this, I was kind of observing their flow, and I drew this drawing to kind of explain what I was seeing happening. Where were the pressure waves? Where was the wake? How was it experiencing its environment? And that's something important. My inspiration came from nature. 
So I looked back to nature and I looked at it and I said, no, it's not about the energy just flowing through the center of this turbine. It's about the energy flowing through, in, and around this turbine, right? So it's the energy that encompasses the whole, whole being, right? So being that this was inspired by nature, I like to make permutations of it, right? So the first idea was to actually take the turbine and expand it and stretch it and get it more towards that shark shape. This is something I couldn't originally do with my design just because they only had a five-foot mill that I could use to build this out of. So I'm usually constrained by what I'm trying to make. I then made a residential style one, and then I said, you know, up and along the river, we lost all of our waterfront. There's no real good place for the you know, wood ducks to kind of go nest anymore. And I said, how great would it be to have a bunch of barges with these things mounted underneath? And we cover the tops of these barges with natural fauna from the area, and we give nesting sites for like birds and things like that. And you're like, well, you know, this doesn't seem this doesn't seem plausible because, you know, the water's moving so slow, it's not a big dam, it's not working like that. And fundamentally, you have to work with the energy that nature presents itself and how it presents itself. So by using hydraulics, we use things like hydraulic capacitors, which is basically a big steel drum with oil in it and a big air on top, big sack of air on top, and that's like an air spring. So as we pump more hydraulic fluid in there, the air compresses, right, and that causes basically a mechanical battery. And you can release the energy from that battery whenever you want. So you have schools of these things, schools, schools like fishes, right? And they kind of swim like up and down the river and you can kind of set them up in high points and low points and you have a place to kind of like recapture all this energy that just flows by. Myself, I'm also an avid camper, I love the outdoors, and I wanted to make one for my backpack. So this one here is actually a collapsible nylon version. So it shrinks down fits in your backpack, and when you're off on a stream somewhere in some remote area and you want to power up your bear fence because you feel like not being eaten, um, <laughs> you can chuck this right out into the stream. You know? It expands out and you can go ahead and just let it trickle charge your batteries. Now since today is TED and you always want something new, I decided to show you something about my new Mega Mouth design. So that's the Mega Mouth design, right? We're talking like 20 foot blades and things like that. And I wanted to show you how I've redesigned and went back to nature yet again to uh, simplify and make this uh, more understandable. So one of the issues we had with the blade system is that you have trying to extract all the energy out of the blades all at one location, right? And so we take our power from the PSI, pounds per square inch, right? So it's based on surface area. So by taking this surface area and extending it out, kind of like a nudibranch, one of those kind of slee slugs, those things that just kind of flop around in the water when they try and move, it's something that moves slowly. It's something that has its load distributed all across it and allows us to extract power differently. So we're going slow speed, big surface area, lots of energy stored through hydraulic pressure. The second thing I did is, since water's not compressible, right, this secondary nozzle, when the water flows in, what does it do? It creates a low pressure system right here. And this low pressure system allow, or low pressure system coming out here and a high pressure system out here sucks the water through the center faster. And then I went further and I said, since the water is not compressible, the area of this opening, it must match the area of this back feed so that there's no buildup of pressure within that system. And then I said, since these things are on the bottom and it's hydraulics and it needs to be ballasted, I left this big empty chamber on the inside, a place where you can store the oil, the fluid, and you're like, oil underwater, I don't like this idea. So you can use things like a vegetable oil, right? And what would happen if there was a spill and there was vegetable oil? You know, yeah, it would be kind of shiny for a while, but in terms of the environment, you'd have fat fish. <laughs> so it's, it's a good idea, yeah. So this is Ted. And this is your new bit and your new piece. Now, there's something that's even more important than all of this, because I'm just one guy who started off in my neighbor's backyard putting some pieces of poplar together. Right? This is actually the list of all the people that it took to make me get to this point. This is a list of everyone who helped me along the way. And when you look inside this, you just see it's just a simple shape. And every little piece of it has been thought of. And even this little sweep right here, this little sweep, it stops debris from coming up because we're, we're putting it back into the environment. It stops the churning of the undertow and the underflow. 
Now, during the course of this project, I ended up raising about $125,000. Uh, the University of Michigan told me it was about $3,000 a day to test, and they were going to give me three days. And then after I showed up with this monstrosity, they said, okay, we'll test it a little bit longer. All right. CCS was wonderful. They helped me mill machine. They helped me, donors helped me get, you know, kinds of money. I didn't have to actually end up paying for my wood. It wasn't until I actually had the model together that someone finally said, hey, um, yeah, we're willing to fund this now, now that it's built. Straight power is something that we can all learn from. Straight power is just paying attention to the environment and nature and what it has to say. Implicitly, the answers to green technology are around us, and they have always been around us. And it's just our duty as creatives, as engineers, as thinkers, and as makers, just to take notice of what is in front of us. Thank you.